welcome to the one within all back to another episode of interverse and today this is going to be a weird one but more in like the sense of the weirding way the mystical path that a lot of us find ourselves on where coincidences pile up to the point of being impossible to calculate the odds and We've got the best man for the job that I've met recently to have a conversation of this caliber with Alan Marcus, who I first got wind of on Weaving Spiders Welcome. Pretty fun YouTube channel that he's become a staple on, a regular member of their phenomenally entertaining and also mind-bendingly deep conversations. And today we're going to, like I said, be looking at the synchromystic pathways that seem to emerge in the external reality after we begin carving internal neural pathways to connect disparate parts of ourself and bring more light into our inner void. And at that point, things get so connected in our life and the opportunities, and in some cases, the wild goose chases can seem overwhelming to the point that some leave the path, some go mad. but as Alan and I have said to one another, the mystic swims in the same waters that the schizophrenic drowns in. You're reading my mind right now. <laughs> I'm reading Alan's mind right now. How you, would you, you introduce yourself, buddy? I know that we should just kind of roll into this. I try not to introduce myself. I try to jump into the middle and just have a conversation with people. And I find that the more I try to introduce myself or describe myself, the more it might distance people from me. And that's not what I want to do. I want to draw closer to people and have intimate conversations with them intimately, really getting to know what their life story is, where they've been, where they are now and where they think they might be going. And it's like in the Lord of the Rings, you know, you get the fellowship together and there's the call to adventure and there's just so much excitement. I think that's the best of the films, if I had to say. Mm -hmm. I get into a lot of Lord of the Rings stuff, so it's good that you make that reference. Maybe you're picking up on my mind a little bit. It's a very strange type of hero's journey that we find ourselves in in 2020, 2021, where the majority of our battles seem to be fought in this strange realm of technology. Yes, and that gets us to the call to adventure. And I use that word call literally, as in I made a live call in to a talk show a year ago, and I sent you that link. Did you listen to it? It was, this is not a drill. What is it? <laughs> that was the best. And actually, that's a great segue from what I was talking about uh, just now with synchromistic pathways in the external world and neural pathways. And Michael Wan gets into that, and I think he also connects that to certain rivers in the world as well. But yeah, I did get to check that out. And the gist of it was that you were asking deep questions regarding what is happening. What we're seeing in the world is a live action role play, <laughs> creating yeah, that something was, more That was real. one year ago. That was, that was what, 14 months ago, 15 months ago. Time has passed so quickly. And it's absolutely insane. And I say that was my call to adventure. Well, I called in because I couldn't sit still anymore. It was March 13th of 2020. And I had just a bizarre dream. And from there, I was like, you know what? I've done all my research. I've been my hermetic hermit. I've been in my hobbit hole taking in so much information, listening to all sorts of podcasts, going deep down all sorts of ant farms. I'm going to call it an ant farm. I don't want to say rabbit hole or wormhole or anything, because you know what? We're all working together, digging these holes, making these paths and coming up for air. And we're really just an ant farm. And there's an ant colony metaphor that we could probably look into. Like alien ant farm? Holes. That was one of my favorite bands back in the day, alien ant farm. Annie, are you okay? Who is Annie? Are we concerned about Annie? And then they have a song. The other probably most popular one is about life being the movies. 
I think a lot about movies and I was studying them so deeply for a period of time. And I have to say my favorite movies are those with actual puppets in them. And we've talked about puppets on some past shows on Weaving Spiders Welcome and who's pulling our strings? Are we in control of our own body? Do we have self autonomy? Or is that self and autonomy larger than what we can conceive of in this body? And that's why it feels like our strings are being pulled. I feel that philosophically there's a strong case to be made that spirit and freedom are synonymous terms. So it may be just a lack of inspiration when we feel like something else is in control. Well, today we're going to inspire you in the weird ways. I expect that. And I affirm that. I'm I'm big into the high strangeness, not because I, I want to be, but because I'm deep in it and I'm swimming in it. And you started with that quote about, you know, this, the mystic and the sinking and the swimming. And we talked about sinkholes in the telegram chat. And then you show me a link to an actual sinkhole in the real world on a road that someone was traveling on. Those things open up where I'm at all over the place. Missouri is like the cave state. So who knows what's going on with that, but it got me thinking, uh, which I thought I'd had before regarding this entire concept of synchronicity. And there's a lot to unpack with it because I, from my research into the mysterious universe we live in, largely from a podcast with that name, I have heard so many stories of people getting onto what seem to be synchronistic pathways that turn into some sort of seemingly some sort of entity like you said pulling the strings just leading them along in some form of entertainment for the entity or some kind of energetic siphoning for someone's I mean, amusement yeah it's like things amusement part, right but then there's also legitimate like soul level synchronicity and i find that this is where the mystic and the schizophrenic separate because one learns to delineate the t between these two possibilities and so back to sinkholes, just that word sink, it has a lot of baggage with it. S-Y-N, synthetic, sin. Yes, there, there's an image, an image macro, sometimes called a meme. And it's basically at the doorstep, there's an old sink and the text reads, let that sink in. And you have to sit and think about the visual humor. And it's very punny in a funny visual way. And that's sort of what we're doing in our creative minds right now. This is a theater of the mind. And we want to paint some inspiring images inside your mind to encourage your creativity. Going back to that quote again, I believe that was Joseph Campbell who said that. And in his books, he talks about a time when he was going through the Great Depression, not a mental state. It was a financial state. And there was a Dust Bowl time, and this was about 1930s, and he had just gone through his education. He was learning so much. He was really interested in the Native Americans, the indigenous people, the shamans, the medicine men, the healers, and all of that. And he was at a point in his life when he wanted to start his life, but due to financial circumstances, he didn't have access to that sort of resources. And you talked to Dylan earlier about sources from source and the resource. There's a uh, just nonstop word play in the systems that govern the way we frame the world. And I had the idea the other day that with synchronicity, a way that we might help others see that there's something to delineate there between a sinkhole and um i like to call I, i've been referring to like the flow state as a flow of perpetual synchronicity i liken it to it's a very fiery day i liken it to my experience as a fire spinner with fire props that i i play with and uh what you find is that when you start to play with the fire something takes over in your body a sense that's like uh, an instinct, if you will, that is just like, I don't want to get burned. So we're going to do the best possible maneuvers to not get burned. 
And you can surrender to that, just like dancing to music and letting the music move your body instead of trying to consciously decide too much about the movements you're going to make. But there's still an aspect where you're not completely surrendered to the flow with the fire, where you're still making choices and direct, like choosing your bearing, your direction. But uh, the, <laughs> the problem with playing with fire is that if you try to go too far too fast, if you try to make something of something that's not there, actually my, another example would be uh, when I used to go to music festivals to trip mushrooms, I learned really early on that if I wanted psilocybin, instead of going out and trying to find it, uh, the best thing would be to let it come to me. Because when you go out looking for something in need, you might think that you're running into synchronicity, but it's actually just a guy that's out there looking for somebody that is in need to rip off and give them something that's bunk, right? But if you just decide, I want to do this, and if it's right, it'll happen, people just give it to you, or whatever the case may be. It doesn't have to be psychedelics, but that is an example of positive synchronicity, magnetic versus like trying and to setting things your that are intention, there. setting your intention for something. You were reminding me of the movie Labyrinth again, and Jennifer Connolly and I share a birthday, month, and day. So if you do your homework, you can learn more about me in that way. And we talk about astrology and astronomy and birth charts a little bit. And there's something to that within similarities. But in the movie Labyrinth, and the point I wanted to make is there's a scene that really stands out and it really just creeps me out. And it's a perfect movie, but there's this one scene. And you know what's the scene? Fire dancers. There are fire dancer puppets. And it's the one scene in the entire movie that I could maybe do without. It makes me uncomfortable, but it's so necessary. Do you know the scene I'm talking about? I actually don't know that film, so no. You don't know Labyrinth. This is the dance, magic dance. This is where you remind me of the babe, and we go on with the memes of David Bowie as the Goblin King. I've heard so many people tell me that that movie is deep. And with the fire dancers, my I Ching card this morning was the clinging, which is fire over fire. And it's like a group of women whose heads are on fire dancing in the artwork. So, and it's and hot be, as hell out there right now too. Oh yes. And to be perfectly clear with your audience right now, the reason we're not on video is because we're in greenhouses. It's very, very warm and it's like a sauna. So you can imagine what the appropriate dress is in a sauna. <laughs> podcasting in the nude like neo in his pod well i was doing some wim hof earlier and i don't know what you were doing to get amped up for this interview but wim hof breathing in that air Remember i wasn't wim hoffing i was laying outside under the sun baking my body for desperate vitamin d absorption and also taking deep breaths, but not in a Wim Hof way, more of a diaphragmatic breathing relaxation way. The, the deep breathing. Yeah, there's so many different names for breathing and people get turned off by that. Do you hear that engine revving? I live, oh, yeah. near, a, I live near a racetrack. That's an interesting place to live. It's interesting that these people will it, okay, let me be clear. When I say racetrack, it has nothing to do with the color of skin, ethnicity, or nationality. It's not a joke about race or the rat race. <laughs> it's about a literal Daytona 500 style race where people get in these cars, they strap themselves in, they put on a football helmet, and they drive around in circles. It's this solipsism that they find themselves in. If your body is a Merkaba, and you're driving around in this car and you're going around in circles and you don't know where you're going. You just know that you want to get there first. And there's this instance where you realize I can be a turtle. Other people can be the hare. They can race and run around. And in Alice in Wonderland, there's that scene where they have their foot race. Do you remember that? Yeah. I'm also thinking of, 
how on a racetrack it's all left turns and it's a left hand path, if you will. Very important. Yes. When you're there's um like a like a dreidel when you spin the dreidel like dio sol or like reverse. Do you know these words? Like um there's an initiation I underwent in my youth group, and we're gonna talk about churches and youth groups and initiations and our religious beliefs. And in my church basement, I was initiated into my youth group to join the tribe of the high school st students, the, the older boys, as I was a younger boy. And I wanted to hang out with everybody. But these older boys, they were going to do this initiation, this hazing ritual thing. And the church had a softball team, so there were softball bats and they're like the aluminum bats and the initiation was to take the bat and put it on my forehead and spin around clockwise as fast as i can for as long as i can can you imagine what happened next it sounds quite disorienting well it was hilarious and it was my option whether i did it or not that was absolutely my choice well, what was the result, man? I'm very, very curious. I got really dizzy. I, yeah. I, I followed their directions. They didn't even really care. They didn't expect me to do it. And it, it wasn't even really an, an initiation. It was, it was just them making a suggestion. We have so many suggestions that we can choose to follow or not. And whether we follow them and become a fool or act foolish because we did that thing, because we wanted someone to say, hey, now you're part of our group. You know, because it's on theme, I'll tell an initiation story from when I was in high school. Absolutely. I was on the football team. And yeah, this fits the theme of fire because the, the older members of the team, if you were accepted by them, would they would invite you to wing stop to eat mountains and mountains of chicken wings. Now I think back on that and I wonder how many chickens were sacrificed for that ritual on a weekly basis, but to get into the club, if you will, the pre the game night, the, the night before the game is when we go, but you had to take a shot glass full of their atomic sauce, which is just like nightmare level hot and down it to be allowed to continue coming to the group. But of course, it's not, it's always still an offer. No one had to do that. They're not missing out on anything oh. crucial to life to be in that group. But being in the in-group, it they got some guys to do way worse things with the atomic sauce too, the more gullible ones. But well, people do that today willingly from the comfort of their own home. There are Tide Pod challenges. I don't know if oh, people God. still do them. There's all sorts of like, I'm, I want to be an influencer. I want to be popular. I want to be at the top of the algorithm on the social media platforms. And there's a terrible story. So cover your ears if you don't like to hear disgusting things. Are you ready for this one? This is gross. Hit me, man. There was a, there was a teenage girl who did not know any better and was all alone and had no friends and wanted to be popular online. The only way she could achieve any sort of notoriety was to do something extreme. And she did just about the most obscene thing. She recorded a video of herself taking a feminine napkin and eating it on video and then posting the video now she had a boy that was impressed by this and she dared him to go further he recorded a video of himself eating his own mm, digested matter i mean you can kind of imagine it's literally there's there's an expression cover your ears kids it's a curse word Eat shit and die. Have you heard that one? 
Yeah, man. You know, I've just been going over this with my girl because she follows this guy on Instagram just to be appalled by him. I think <laughs> some guy who's like uh, oh, trying yeah. to pass off veganism as also requiring that you need to drink your own urine. And it's just, he looks like he's dying and you know, he Gross. says things like the only reason I, I even, he says things like you must keep drinking your urine and dry fasting other than that until there's until no more pee comes out and then you're a breatharian. Stuff like that. I mean, it is right. hardcore that's what, crazy. That's what we're talking about with initiation rituals, hazing rituals, and the foolishness that people will subject them to in order to pat themselves on the back to maybe signal to an in-group that, hey, I want to be part of what you guys are doing on your social media platform. That's sort of the dark and disgusting aspect that people will subject themselves to out of loneliness and a year of quarantine and lockdowns and forced zoom chats and skype calls people have done some really bizarre things well it's like this the path of individuation is biophilic it's life affirming because that's what life is pushing you into on the most natural sense but crowd consciousness and lack of selfhood, lack of individuation is conversely necrophilus. And that's why there is all this toilet humor and excrement consumption, whether it's the excrement that comes off the screens in the form of all the ridiculous things that are passed off as totally wholesome entertainment or, you know, actually mm -hmm. drinking mm -hmm. your urine. Manure goes in the garden. If you pour urine into a houseplant, it'll burn the roots. There are uses for the nitrogen and all the chemicals in your urine, but to drink it and think that you are going to gain superpowers seems to me a, a self-initiation, humiliation ritual that doesn't benefit anyone except that it brings you attention and possibly the wrong kind of attention well then you've also got the, the phenomenon that when whether it's joining a protest movement or posting your version of a, a tiktok meme there's a certain elation and rush that comes in to a being when they are evacuating selfhood and maybe that's why they're obsessed with evacuated things from the body in a way. I'm not sure, but that's definitely a part of the dynamic. And also in the sense of the guy who's like starving himself of nutrients and drinking his own pee and thinking he feels strong while day by day, his body's looking thinner and thinner. There's a lot of body self. Dysmorphia. There's a lot of body dysmorphia, and this is um, men and self women vampirism. This. Yes, absolutely. It's parasitic uh, self vampirism, and in on the physical plane, even when you're starving yourself, going too far, like fasting has its purposes. Don't get me wrong, but when you're going so far that you're actually feeling energized, thinking that you're fine because your body's eating itself, and that's where your energy is coming from. It's like a ticking clock, but there, there is a disorder in your energy consumption when you're not sure what you can allow yourself to eat or not eat. You're separating yourself from the external world and the nature around you too. You're like, I have to be self-contained and drink only my own pee. That's it's, it's the it, wrong it goes, kind of it, isolation. Uh, yes, yes, yes. And this is where I get so fired up and it's like, there's that Tom Hanks movie. Say what you want about Tom Hanks. Life is like a box of chocolates and all that. Tom Hanks, whatever, man. You're Tom Hanks. You're hanging out on an island and you're talking to a ball, not your testicles. Maybe that's a conversation he was having, but he is talking about a beach ball named Wilson because it was the Wilson brand. And this man is on an island. And there's a phrase, no man is an island. And the visual representation of that movie, if anyone remembers it, is insane. 
That's a deep one. And then Tom Hanks has all kinds of weird threads about him online right now. And we're not going down rabbit holes today. We're navigating through our ant farm, our alien ant farm. <laughs> and those fire ants, if you're not careful and you stand on their hill, they'll start biting you and stinging you and, get, and trying to get you off. And it's there's like some, so many the things hill. I want to so many directions I want to go right now. I also happened to just have watched King of the Hill uh, the first couple of episodes just a few weeks ago out of the blue. I didn't even know that. It's so... Oh, like the other day, whenever you me. referenced on Telegram, you referenced something that I had said and used the never-ending story as an example. And I was like, bro, I just saw the never-ending story for the first time since I was a small child last night. And then you bring that up. There's all kinds. And I was just about to open the book of never ending story and read to you the sad scene. <laughs> oh, Mola, the aged one <laughs> in the swamps of sadness. Can you like tie this into the marbles? I can tie everything into a nice pretty package with a pretty little bow. Can I sit back for the story time and just you let it rip? This is ASMR with Chance and Ellen Marcus on Interverse, and we're going to inspire your imagination because every time I say something, it produces thoughts in your mind, and I really don't know what you're thinking, but you respond to me, and I respond to you, and the conversation keeps flowing. You mentioned the never ending story. And I was recording an audio book where I was reading Michael Endy's novel, The Never Ending Story, with a sort of ASMR voice. That's the auto, some, some meridian response. It's, it's, it's scientific, it doesn't matter. There's the frisson effect you hear when someone is intimately speaking to you close to your ear. And the hairs on the back of your neck kind of stand up and you're receiving the message, the encouragement, the intimate words. And that's really what people have been lacking so much is that deep, resonating, wide, it's not a shallow pool, it's a deep swim we're going on. And the waters at the top of the ocean or the lake or the river are choppy, but you deep dive down into the mud and there are pearls of wisdom there, dear listener. That's where Falcor finds the talisman. What is the name of the talisman in the never ending story? Anyone? I can't, I can't remember. I didn't get to watch all of it. It's long, but I was it's, tuning it's in. Long. It's on, yeah, it's like less than two hours, but it's on my full viewing list. It was at a family gathering that I saw it. So it wasn't like I was able to sit down, but my eyes just kept being drawn to it. And also you just explained why since I met you, I've been like wanting to talk to you frequently. You have this gentle voice that is also penetrating, which is the exact meaning of the card I just drew from my I Ching deck, which is air over air, air being the gentle element. And the entire meaning of this is a subtle but deep influence, nonviolent understanding, and even faith, which I find very, very interesting. I've described myself as an amateur humoridian. And that might sound like amateur. It might sound like a very mature. And humor reading, of course, brings us back to the element of humor and making obscene gestures or acting like a jester or dancing in circles like a fool. Okay, what's the talisman called? Help us out. Capital A U R. Y N Orin or in 
Well, there are there are ores, there are auras. It's made of it looks like I think copper, maybe. Or is even a word for for the sun in some etymology pathways. Yes, there's a lot of synchro mystic aspects. Some people might use the word esoteric or occult or hidden meanings. It could be an allegory or just a really enjoyable novel that you can read or listen to me read it to you. You can probably find that on YouTube if you look hard enough. They won't even have to look that hard. I'm going to link your YouTube channel. Oh, no. See, that might get me in trouble because I was doing some really obscene gestures about 10 years ago on YouTube. And this was before TikTok, before Instagram had video. And I was calling myself a fundamental YouTubist. What does that mean? To me, it was going back to this Dogma 95 manifesto in filmmaking, which was stating that if you're going to make a movie, let's make it natural. Let's use digital cameras. Let's shoot on location. Let's make sure all the sound and the audio comes from the real natural world. Let's tell real stories. Later on, that sort of changes into this genre of mumblecore which is something that i tend to maybe fall into sometimes when i begin to mumble you know the mumblecore movies where it's just a bunch of bros hanging out and mumbling to each other and talking about strange philosophy and just making a movie with their friends <laughs> mumblecore that's mumblecore fum fun fum fum fumbling over my words is something i like to do because that's part of communication So when I would make a video, it would be hit record, dance like a monkey, do something stupid, get some attention, put on some makeup, wear a silly costume, have fun with it, and then upload the video and consider it as a glimpse of personality. So I can find this stuff from a decade ago if I look hard enough is what you're saying. Well, some of them. Some of them are now private. Some of them are hidden. Some of them might might make appearances again. And gems within the ether. That's what it is. What it was for me, a visual representation of the changes I've made over time, the physical changes of my body where I have, you know, fitness update videos. You know, maybe I pull my shirt off and I show my, my body. I'm not ashamed of it. Or I'll pull my hair out of a bun and I'll shake it out and say, this is a hair update video. It's going well. My hair is growing. Thanks for watching. That sort of thing. I would do an unboxing video where I'd get a package from Amazon. I'd open the box. I'd take another box out of the box. I'd show it off. I'd smile and say, thanks for watching. It was an unboxing video, that sort of thing. All of the classic YouTubist genres right there. And I was encouraging other people to get involved with this. And there was a few people that had some fun with it. I like how you have fun with that. Uh, I would definitely want to know what you're unboxing. You just never know with people. Sometimes it's a little it might peek have been into a their life. Record. Sometimes it might have been, it, it could have been anything. And there, there's a certain person who gets angry and frustrated when I don't say in the video description, what it is people will say hey man you're wasting my time why should i watch your video well first of all it's your choice and second of all there are people that receive so much joy and elation and they laugh or they have a reaction to not knowing what something might be or become like this conversation we don't know where we're going and we're crawling in the dark, like a Linkin Park song, maybe. But we kind of, <laughs> we kind of know where we're going. We kind of have an agenda. Maybe we won't use the word agenda. Maybe we'll say a bullet point list of talking points. But really, this is, this is just a conversation we're having between two friends who just met each other recently. How did that happen? I believe it happened from someone in our 
dear shared community of, I don't want to say audience because they're co-creators to the entire environment that is being constructed between Weaving Spiders and Interverse and other shows and hosts that we share and align values with. But I'm yes. not sure who turned me on. I think it was Jenny B who gave me the tip Shout off out to Jenny B onto and- a Weaving Spiders episode. And the first yeah. episode of them that I watched was you speaking with them. And uh, on the subject of agendas, that conversation just made me really want to talk about with you what you were talking about on that episode, which was the Elon Musk Wario skit on SNL, which is just one of the craziest One of the craziest magic spells I've ever seen from mainstream network TV. It had everything in it. And uh, just unpacking the elements and the the branches and roots that that connects to out in the world from fake space, space hex, space sex, rule 34, uh, legal fiction. We're we're, we're (laughs) getting into this conversation deep and I want to thank everyone for listening and let them know that for listening today, they have the opportunity to receive a free NFT. I made this NFT and I'm giving it away to everybody who hears this. Is that something I can do? Sounds good. I mean, I shared uh, it to you. Do you remember what it was? (laughs) Is it the Elon Musk Dogecoin? Yes, Elon Musk deposited Dogecoin in my PayPal hashtag blast. You know, speaking of PayPal, PayPal, they uh, no longer work on eBay. No longer allowed to use it there. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Yeah, and I saw. I'm seeing stickers we're making at video. restaurants in my small town in the Midwest. Stickers on their plexiglass safety barrier that say things like Dogecoin accepted here. Doggy coin. Official currency of e- Mars. Egad. Egad. <laughs> what an exclamation point above our heads as we Much do our well. MMORPG and we do our quest and we and we go to the restaurants or the businesses that accept doggy coin. And it's a fun game and it's like Pokemon Go and we're playing with money and money is so fun to play with and it's not a real thing. It's like gambling, but we all win, right? We all, we're all blessed and we're all having fun with this and we're sharing art and maybe I'm being a little facetious. Maybe. I like to delineate the uh, video game money from the Monopoly money. From actual money. I'm being serious about giving people a free meme. It's this thing I made. It's beautiful. I took some clip art. I had an idea in my mind. I was inspired. I don't know where this came from, but I made it. And I was playing with the symbols that Elon Musk provided me. And I just thought, you know what? I'm not going to resist it. I'm not going to be fearful of it. I'm going to see where it takes us. We're going to embrace doggy coin, doge coin, the doge father. Oh yeah. And he's L on as well. L on high, the Illy, the high mountain, the place of the priest class, the priest Kings who are the bankers. And we go to commerce in a building which is very um, uh, temple-like. And it's like a religious offering we make when we pay our tithes and offerings and dues via our fiat to the organizations that we are members of. Do they accept Dogecoin, Bitcoin, Ethereum out in the air anywhere? Can you bite a Bitcoin? Can, can you prove it's valid? Can you get a marks? bite of a Bitcoin? Can you sink your teeth into this like a vampire sucking garlic and enjoying it? There were so many tasteful and tasteless jokes on SNL the night Elon Musk showed up to let us know 
with his mother because the next day is Mother's Day. That what Elon about this, Musk, Alan? Saturday, yeah. Saturday, Saturn, Saturn L. L, L was a Saturn name at yes. one point. And then it's night, but on is more of a daytime word, but on is even the name of the god worshipped at Heliopolis, which was a sun cult. L on Saturday and night. This is what wizards if do. I've, we sit around and we read a lot of books and we think strange thoughts and we begin to form through our neural pathways, reconnecting in unusual ways so that we see things that may not be there. Our pattern recognition abilities are enhanced in such a way that are far above and beyond that of parodelia, where we see smiling faces in the clouds or demons on our burnt toast. I saw smiling faces in smoke clouds last night. There's this word, biosemiotics, and I won't go too deep into it, but life has a language. Bio being life, semiotics being signifying, communicating, telling a message. And there are images of these flocks of birds, and they fly so closely together that there's an image I saw when someone was capturing a picture of a horse on like a sand dune or um, a beachy swampy area where there's water, where there was these birds that were um, landing, nesting, roosting, whatever they're doing. And there's this horse that's riding by and the photographer is standing there taking pictures of this horse. He later realizes when he's on his computer looking at these images that the birds in the sky had formed in a formation of the very horse that he had taken a picture of. That's pretty far out. Let that sink in. <laughs> good, good thing he was looking up. He wasn't looking up. He was looking at his camera. He was framing a photo with a horse. The birds were playing with him. He didn't realize this until after. It was a slow realization that, well, there's a pattern there. And those birds look exactly like the shape of this running horse. And they're running together in the sky like pixels in the sky. And that's where we have to ask what happens when our consensus reality breaks down and the impossible, right? In a materialistic world, the impossible happens and we notice it. And you know, then it notices us is where we go with this. What I, I saw, I went down a ant tunnel on the internet last week of videos of birds getting stuck in midair, mid-flight. Also some videos of people who seem to be frozen and stuck. Yes, and, and we brought that up too in our Telegram chat. And some of those videos were being shared by people who represent themselves as members of the truth community. And the videos are shared with a certain interpretation. And then a quick Google search reveals that the videos are older than what the uh, interpretation being provided. Yeah, someone's uh, pulling the wool over your eyes. Maybe you're being hoodwinked. Maybe or they are uh, just lazy about looking into things. <laughs> Who knows? Lazy like, uh, or it's, like there's still some videos of birds freezing in midair, though. Just but we love to share engine. memes. We love our nine gigs. We love our chans. We love our image boards. I'm we are such too. a visual visual society now and there are benefits to that and then they're also like well you know if you're scrolling through instagram and you're scrolling and you're not taking in every image but you're just flicking your finger over the screen and going as fast as you can your subconscious is taking all this information in and you might stop because you see what looks like flesh or you might stop because you see something in motion or something that's familiar 
It's like, what are you consciously taking in? And then what is your subconscious aware of that you come to awareness of later in the day or through a dream or because you took a picture of something to remember it forever and then you look at the photograph and you see things in the image that you didn't see with your own eyes because you just didn't notice them at the time. Sometimes they're not even visible till you look at it through the tech. I said a minute ago that I saw figures in a smoke cloud, but that was actually an artifact in a photograph of a fire from last night. I was with a bunch of my extended family members because we just lost an uncle. Yeah. And yes. also in the last less than two years, my on that side of the family, my mom's side, both my grandfather and grandmother have passed. And we had this photograph from last night of an orb near the fire pit. It looked like three Return of the Jedi pre credits scene force ghosts standing there with wizard robes. And one of them had a crazy beard. I don't know, but it was pretty cool. And there were other fascinating coincidences with that, like... Um, that my so aunt these are all me very, about. very personal, very personal that I can't get into, but signs that were always readily available. And they're highly the they charged with emotions. That is true. Think about that for a moment. What happens when your emotional state is charged? It's increased. It might be a deep sadness, again, swamps of sadness, Artax, this beautiful white horse, Atreyu's best friend and partner on a journey. Atreyu's riding on on his horse, and the horse is just, it can't go on any longer. And then the horse, well, you probably know what happens to the horse. Atreyu now has to walk. but. Because Atreyu has the aura and he's got the aura, he's got this talisman that is a good luck charm. It's like a lucky rabbit's foot. It attracts a luck dragon. And now he goes from riding on the earth to walking to being picked up by a luck dragon and flying high through the sky and having a higher vantage point. And that's kind of what we're talking about in this conversation is when we are so close to the ground going down rabbit holes or participating in the human alien ant farm project where there are paths and tunnels and we follow them through and we're in lockstep together walking to the dinner hall to get our grub and then we're going back to work and we're just down in the depths of our deepest soul and yet we have dreams in my case literal dreams where i'm flying in the sky generally that's what i dream about my other most common dream is well normal things might be going on or whatever but pretty much in every dream lately i have the power to hold my hand out and point it at something and make that thing fly to my hand like Luke Skywalker going for the lightsaber. It's pretty sweet. And I take like it takes a little warming up and practice when I'm in the dream, but You're like a lucid dream there. state. No, it's not a fully lucid dream. It's just something I do in the dreams. I'm not like controlling the dreams. So you're not aware say. that you're dreaming, but in your dream, you are acting out in such a way that you have like Jedi mind tricks and powers. I can jump super far if I'm not outright flying. See, that's interesting. I wanted to say so much, and there's a lot of like dangling chads that we have to, to, to deal with, and we got to count them up and yeah. see where we're at. A lot of chads. We're not hanging out in Florida right now, but it sure feels like it. We're on Muscle Beach. Maybe we're in California. There will be a lot of chad recovery in well, the second hour, I'm sure. Oh, uh, we had we we left a lot of breadcrumbs, and the way we met, and this is kind of a silly story, but I'm a silly guy, and I'm really sincere. 
I found this um, like a bread. Sincere tie, starts like with sink, tie. buddy. What are you trying sink. to pull here? No tricks. Full disclosure. Everything will be revealed. This is the best apocalyptic episode ever. Everything you want to know, we will share it with you. And if we don't get it in this episode, ask, and we'll and we'll get to it in episode two. Yeah, or a Telegram group chat. You never know. Those pop the up from time to time. Continues. So I sent you a picture of this little white twisty tie with a date on it. Yeah, I got that. It's like zero five one zero two one or something. And this was before May 10th. I have to use my fingers for math and try to try to think because there's so much going on. Just it's fractal thinking. It's not linear. It's multidimensional thinking. But in the simple real world, in the material world that I live in, there was a date printed on a little twisty tie. March, April, May, May 10th. 2021. And I thought I had a silly thought, but I, it was a pure of heart thought. And I intended to say to myself, I'm going to keep this. I don't know what's going to happen on this day, but it's going to be great. Something really good is going to happen on this day. And I'm going to forget about it. So I set it aside. And I was on Twitter. I was listening to the Freeman show with Freeman Fly, you know, Freeman. Definitely. And I'm listening to that. And thinking, you know what, this is a good conversation. There's two people talking. This is Darren talking to Freeman. They're talking about Liverpool and some interesting archaeological finds. And My uncle's mythology. name is Darren, by the way. Ha-ha. <laughs> the one that just went over. Darren's on the other side. Yeah, there's a little Darren peekaboo. Love there's that. The, there's the Darren Bridge connection. Dare, D-A-R-E, a dare, an initiation. I dare you to oh, do man. this thing. <laughs> I dare you to set a positive, silly, sincere intention with a talismanic object, a thing with a date on it, a future date, grab it, hold on to it, and say, on this day, something beautiful and positive will happen. That's what I did. The story goes that I'm on Twitter, I'm tweeting, I'm responding, and then someone's like, hey, this is an interesting conversation. Why don't you come on and speak on a podcast? This is the Weaving Spiders Welcome Crew. And I was going to do that the night Elon was on SNL, but Christopher Knowles of The Secret Sun had released an interview that same night so there was so much going on i had planned to talk to barsky and gordon and jim maiden all these really great guys on weaving spiders welcome but that didn't happen on that saturday night but on monday night so we're talking may 8th of 2020 that saturday night didn't happen but we stayed in contact and we made it happen on 5 10 21, which was the exact date printed on that little expiration clip for a loaf of bread. So, how does that breadcrumb trail <laughs> tie into all of this? Well, a positive intention was set. I forgot about it. And then I met some really cool people. Yeah. And I was tuning into that one live. So That's I met, how we met, I met all of them and you in that moment on that night too. I was riveted, man. That breakdown of the L on ritual on SNL was just so off the chain. And I had no intention to go into such depth on that. I was just speaking about what I saw and what I was thinking. And people were responding to it. So I continued on with it. I had an entirely different topic prepared to discuss in depth, but synchronistic, synchronistically, it's, it becomes a bit of a tongue twister when you have these words that you're trying to get out of your mouth and communicate over the airwaves with people. But 
the message was received and it was well received. You tuned in, you messaged me, I responded right away, and we were going to chat on the 23rd of this month, but life happens, and here we are today on 6-4, Nintendo 64. At 3.33 p.m. right At now. At 3.33 p.m. when all signs point to... What do the signs point to, Alan? I'm not sure. They point me many ways. First of all, 64, just the 6-4, there's a lot in that number. It's I kept bringing up the I Ching. That's 64 right there. Computer game reality, video what, game reality, computer what is, 64 bit. Oh, what is the 23rd? What is that? And the I Ching. Oh, great question. Do you have that memorized? Do you, can you pull it out of your deck? I can pull it out of my deck. Some on the spot, I don't always come up with what it is. Uh, it's sure. something. And you know, some this I know, is, some I don't remember. This is where we come down to earth and we reveal that, you know, we are flesh and blood mortals, just like you, listener, and we're not on some higher level club. We are having a conversation. We're talking. We're just to hanging you know, out. We're just, <laughs> we're just bros, man. This is a bromance. <laughs> it's a mumblecore. We are mumblecore into our Joe. Brogan Studios. We are Oprah for women. This is our reading club. And I had a huge, long bibliography, and I was going to assign our listeners so much homework. But you know, this is graduation day for many people in America today. They are literally walking with capes and gowns, and their Harry Potter school days are over and they're ready to begin their adventure as adults in the real world so we don't need to assign any homework today today we celebrate <laughs> our leveling up yeah and as we're about to break apart between the free hour and the paid hour what you just said about graduation right now is appropriate to hexagram 23 which i pulled out and that is mountain over earth Splitting apart is the interpretation. There it is. All broken lines with one solid line at the very top. And this is where we do need to make a split and say, thanks for listening. There's more on the other side. Yeah, who knows what, but it's going to be fun. Do you want them to be able to connect with you in any way? Do you want to give these? I am I'm just a guy on Instagram. I'm on Telegram trying to do the social media thing but you know what it's it's really tiresome but i will provide that free nft it's a gif or gif it's like peanut butter it's delicious you're gonna love it and i'll put that on my pin post on marcus 86 e D. ED does not stand for erectile dysfunction. <laughs> it does not stand for eating disorder. It's a verb. It's an action. It's 86th. It's like being 23rd or 23rd. Uh, 23 and me. Uh, do you see where we're going here with these numbers? I was just thinking about how the numbers are going to really cause Elon Gate to blow up. That's a bad joke. There's Elongate, there's Elsagate, there's Rule 34. There's a lot of cryptic secrets. And you know what? It's worth it. It's absolutely worth it to support your friends, your tribe, toss a few Dogecoin at them, you know, and, and join the community. This is what you do. You pay to play. You pay out of respect, it's value for value. And there's a lot of people in podcasting. We're going to talk about pods, podcasting versus netcasting, podcasting 2.0. I have so much I want to talk about with pods. That is definitely our two stuff. We're teasing so much. I'm just going to sit back, let you transition to the other side. Well, you made it easy for me, man. That was great. We're, we're basically there. So you guys know the drill, Patreon or Rockfin. Linked in the show description. As for Telegram, Alan may agree with me that sometimes the glow box feels quite uh, drudgery <laughs> filled to like keep up with. 
I apologize to anyone out there that I haven't responded to in a timely manner. I think I replied to an email from August of last year today. So we do our best. We're human beings, but Telegram is actually a good place to connect with Alan because I do a lot of back and forth with him myself there. And sometimes you can just be on a fly on the wall to weird, incredible information in that channel. I recommend it. It's a lot less frustrating than Instagram, Facebook, all that. It's Apps, not, which I'm like just Discord. It's leading off my phone. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's harmonizing with other voices. And I really encourage people to use their voice in join voice chat. But the thing I like is this asynchronous ability to leave a voicemail in a chat. You just hold down your thumb on the microphone icon. You mm -hmm. speak your mind and you put your intentions out there and people can hear your voice, listen to it and respond to you. And that is the power of Telegram. I've been doing my morning card draw and then speaking into the microphone button on Telegram, leaving what would have just been my own train of thought in an externalized form for anybody else to pick up on. And it always seems to click with the people in the know. We all flow together in the no state. GNO. But now we got to go. So we'll we see you go. on the other side, everybody. We Thanks, want Alan. to see you. We want to see your smiling faces. Join us on the other side. All right. So how about that one? <laughs> oh, man, I'm just looking back on that conversation. Definitely never had one like it. You know, it made me think of how something that used to take away my confidence when I was younger was that I'm pretty adept at like mirroring other people. And uh, so as a host, I used to, well, I still catch myself doing it inadvertently, but now I just kind of embrace it. And as a host, I would notice that I would take on, especially when I would edit the uh, conversations down to every last um, I used to do that back in the day. I would notice that I was saying the same type of verbal crutch words that they would say. And in a lot of ways, I was taking on the mannerisms and speech patterns of people that I'm talking to directly. So I don't know if that's like good or bad or neutral, but with Alan, I didn't uh, just do that inadvertently. <laughs> I definitely was trying to sink into his mind, sink in. <laughs> and it was fun. Dude is very interesting. And I think that was just like a warm up conversation, literally a warm up conversation. It was super hot that day. In the future, we might pick a more specific topic to hone in on and see what type of things we're all about as we play with the words. But all in all, I can hardly even recall <laughs> a lot of what was said because it just flowed back and forth from thing to thing so quick. And hopefully, you like that, it's a different type of episode but also just as much of a flow state as any other, maybe even the most honest one of a long time because of the fact that there were no real plants going in. Anyway, I hope that you guys are feeling the same type of vibe I'm feeling lately. Steady progress, building up that confidence, learning how to play to your own strengths and not view your uniqueness as weakness, <laughs> turn your uniqueness into your weapon. Well, and for me, a lot of my uniqueness is adaptability. I see that now. I have a lot of skills that I'm kind of good at, good enough to possibly be of help and of service. And only a few that I feel like maybe I'm closer to mastery on, maybe none that I've mastered. But that said, the path is the goal, not the destination. So anyway, it's been an awesome couple of weeks. I'm um, dropping this episode pretty quick, right right after following up on the Emily Ridout one, due to the fact that I'm going to be out of town for a music and arts festival this weekend. So these two are kind of getting squished together, released date-wise. It's called Reconnection Festival. I've had to have brought it up on an outro before, but I've definitely talked about it a lot on the Telegram group and on Facebook, if you have any Facebook friends with me. So I will be doing a live podcast there. If all goes well, I'll have something, maybe more than one something 
to bring back and post up to my channels as like uh, in the field work. <laughs> we'll see though. In the past, I don't usually feel like doing that type of stuff, uh, working while I'm at one of those events. Kind of just want to slip into the vibe and enjoy where it takes me and meet interesting people. But I will bring my mic and equipment and I'm obligated to do at least some form of live podcast, whether or not it's well recorded because I'm a speaker there. That's how I got invited and uh, it's going to be awesome. I think it'll be kind of similar to the one day of brightness material that I'll do not long after, uh, I guess the next weekend. I'll get to that in a second. That's another thing that's coming up that you can connect with me at. But in the past, I've just on live podcasts at, at festivals and events, I've just kind of gone with the flow, felt the room, spoken intuitively for like 30 minutes, and then open it up to like a panel discussion. So if any of you guys are going to be at Reconnection Festival, right outside of St. Louis, like 30 or 45 minutes outside of St. Louis, is from June 10th to the 13th. I'll be speaking on Saturday uh, evening, I think after nine, kind of late. So anyway, I'll be around the Crow Mother Collective tent the whole rest of the event. Not the whole rest of the event, but a lot of it. And I've got posters and you can talk to me. I got some cool new stickers. Hey, we're on video now. I can show you a sticker. Neat, right? It's holographic. Yeah. <laughs> so I'll hook you up with the uh, stickers and high fives and hugs. Like if you come up and tell me you're a fan of the show, I mean, it'd be cool if you bought a poster, but odds are I would just give you one because I'd be so happy to meet you or to already have known you and not realize that you listen to the show. That's cool too when that happens. <laughs> okay, so uh, one day of brightness. You know what? Hold on that. I didn't even make the pitch for you guys to listen to the second hour, the plus extension. Shame on me. Self-promotion. It's tough, but let's uh, talk about that. Do you not already heard that I am on Rockfin and Patreon? If not, it is a very simple procedure to follow the links in the show description. Join either Rockfin or Patreon and get access to not just a bonus hour of conversation in this particular episode, but an hour and a half. Alan and I lost track of time. It got weird. <laughs> I don't even want to tell you what we talked about an hour or two. Uh, <laughs> Uh, other, I don't want to ruin the surprise, you know? Why would I do that? It's just fun and different and deep. Definitely deep. We found Alan's marbles in the end, okay? That much is certain. Anyway, Rockfin's 10 bucks a month, but you get access to all the channels on Rockfin. Pretty sweet deal. Not just my channel. Uh, Patreon's five bucks a month, and you get just me if you join my Patreon. But either way, you get video versions of episodes and the full plus extensions. Uh, upside to Patreon is it's only $5 and it's got my, uh, whatchamacallit, RSS feed. So you can plug that into your favorite podcast player. With Rockfin, you're going to need a separate app, but they do have an app for Android and for iPhone. So there's pros and cons to both. Another pro of Patreon, again, other than the fact that it's only $5 for a month of it, which is pretty sweet. You can download a lot of shows in a month. Yeah. Uh, you get the whole archive of everything I have ever done through Patreon in that RSS feed. Whereas it's a little harder to search for things on Patreon. So that's a con. And on Rockfin, you just got the 2021 shows, which are probably some of the best. Don't get me wrong. And uh, a few choice selections, more than a few from 2020. And I'll keep filling out those archives randomly as I see fit. I don't know. Maybe I'm just too harsh of an inner critic, but I don't feel like putting it all up chronologically. Some of them probably won't even make the cut. And I thought, why not just, yeah, post the ones that I want to post. Anyway, Rockfin, 10 bucks, great deal. Support a lot of creators at once. Get a lot of content beyond just mine. Patreon, only five bucks. You literally only pay $5 <laughs> and get hours and hours and hours of shows, including this one, a bonus hour and a half. So I pitched it hard. What do you think? You're going to go sign up? I'd really like it. Uh, so the support has been amazing lately. I'm needing it badly because I don't have time because of how much the show work has picked up to go to a day job like I used to. I can do a little bit of that, but not as, not as much. So I appreciate the support. 
And if you are out there just a free listening barnacle, I still love you. Of course, I still love you. This isn't about commerce, really deep down. It's about hopefully inspiring you and making you have a little bit of positive weirdness in your life on a semi-regular basis. So if that's you, can't support for financial reasons, it's only five bucks. Uh, that's still cool. You know, we're out here trying to do our thing, both of us, you and me. And I'm glad that we can have some form of connection through the free show. And I'm glad that there's also a reciprocity and a badass gift, gift that keeps on giving for people that do have the means to support. So, man, I really went on and on about that. Anyway, uh, I want to tell you about one day of brightness. That's another thing coming up. Lindsay Sharman of Rogue Ways who you have to probably know well by now. She is hosting another One Day of Brightness Solstice event. This is on June 19th. And um, another thing I'll say real quick is you may not have caught it, but on Rogue Ways about, I don't know, a couple weekends ago, I did a show where I broke down my research into like Gnosticism and video games. It's the same thing I did with Beth Martins on her channel. Sort of, but I have had more revelations since then, and it got better. And, you know, Lindsay's a different host, and she had a much different interpretation or background knowledge of the stuff than Beth. So that made it, even though I was presenting slides I've done before, if you didn't catch that the first time anyway, it's really good. Go check out Rogue Ways for that. I didn't mirror it to my channels yet. I might do that down the line, but I want you to sub to her. Anyway. So that happened, and now we're doing one day of brightness where I'm going to be some sort of a teacher, speaker, hang out with you for a certain amount of time. I'm not sure, but the thing goes all day from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. Mountain time. And it's only $60, and people seem to enjoy it. I have not been to one yet, but I'm looking forward to being able to attend and check out the other speakers there. There's a martial arts guy that I'm pretty keen to hear his perspective on things. Maybe I think there's going to be some like participation from the people that are virtually attending. I would think I would, I would hope. So we'll do stuff like I Ching fling cards at the screen, like Gambit from the X-Men, like the 46 card pushing upward, accepting challenges, promoting yourself, (laughs) promoting the way you think about yourself in your mind. And uh, recognizing yourself, that's actually really great. I, I learned this a while, a while back, but I'm the type of person that is praise-driven. Maybe in that way, I'm like the dog chants from Homeward Bound, the golden retriever in me. It just really likes to be told I'm good. It makes me feel good. So how do you guarantee that you receive that type of recognition and witness? Witness yourself. And actually, you know, appreciate the cool stuff that you do in your life. It doesn't have to be the same stuff other people do. If you're doing stuff you love in your life, appreciate it. Recognize yourself for it. It's good. It's good. Self-confidence is good. It is not a sin. (laughs) Okay. So I'm probably going to dip. I'm glad that I got to tell you about everything. One day of brightness, June 19th on the solstice is going to be powerful. There will be tuning forks, there will be tarot cards, there will be one-on-one questions and answers that somehow I will know the exact right thing to say, probably, maybe, but we will have fun. And I'm definitely gonna have fun at this festival coming up and I'm uh, I'm out of here. Oh, ooh, yeah, the outro song. Oh guys, follow Marcus and, and Weaving Spiders, welcome. I'm sorry, everybody, that I waited this long to say that. Alan Marcus, follow that man on Twitter and uh, Weaving Spiders, welcome on YouTube. Follow that for sure. Marcus 86, it'll be linked in the episode description. That is both his YouTube channel and his Twitter channel. Really interesting stuff on his YouTube, really random. We talked about that in the conversation. Oh man, I, I just keep going. I forgot to tell you guys. I have to admit that when I said in the, Three hour of the show that I had just watched the never ending story. Apparently that was the never ending story too. I didn't realize it. <clears throat> it's true. I lied. But the good news is I have now seen the never ending story one as of two days ago. 
and it is so good. And now I'm going to read the book. So let's do like a summer book club and let's all read it or listen to the audio book and talk about it on Telegram. Join my Telegram. It is a sweet group chat. You get updates from me. I do a lot of daily I Ching tarot card updates. Super fun. Amazing people in there. All these things that you can do are linked in the show notes. Somebody even bought a t-shirt the other day. That has like never happened. The link has been there forever. So kudos to you who bought that awesome men's tank top with the universe logo. And I apologize to everyone out there who wants better shirt designs and I don't have them up yet. I will be doing stuff like that later. I'm going to be like putting stickers up there and things you can buy. Neat swag that I don't know. Maybe you want it. <laughs> So that's it. Did I do it? Outro music, Smigonaut, Divine Intervention. I let the uh, fates and, and chants select this song. And uh, literally by making like a, a random SoundCloud radio station based on another song I like. And this is the song it gave me. It was called Divine Intervention. And it was by a guy who I had already previously asked if I could play his music on the show. So I didn't even have to do that part. It's pretty sweet. Stick around for the, the song. Find the uh, link in the show notes. And I love you guys. Thanks for listening. Oh, you know what? Okay. Here's the deal with pushing forward. One last thing I noticed. All right. We did that chat on 6-4. And pushing forward or pushing upward is card 4-6. There it is. That's it. Incredible. All right. Talk to you guys later after this festival. Hope to have some cool stuff to show you from it. And uh, bye-bye. Slip inside this vibe for size, just give it a try. Still dreaming as I'm twisting the skin of my arm. Started to get to know myself when the rhythm was off. I got feelings involved, but those feelings evolve. I was cutting for the bucket, had to give me a lob. I made a point and an assist at the same damn time. I made a hit and threw a pitch to the same damn guy. I will tell you what to think, I'ma let you decide. These yes men, Bible heads, all fit in a box. I found me, that's the key. I be picking the lock with smigger knots. Twisting knobs to a different knot. Permission or not, commission or not. Consist Consistently drop fire. It's deliciously hot. I grab a mic and make a sizzle like I'm hitting a glob. With this position I got, I'm everywhere. Quantum superposition. And through my vision, I'm connecting the dots. Simultaneously existing in different spots. I'm defined by physics with these rhymes. I'm spitting, vibrating as I'm timeline shifting. They hating, well, I'm on my business. You decide your limits. As I'm juggling the limes and the lemons, life throws my way. But I'm an alchemist from a higher dimension where time isn't present. <laughs> Welcome to your divine intervention. It, I shattered the box I can't fit in I'm dropping hooks like a tackle box This cat's fishing Victory lapping before the victory happened They sit back and relax as I'm manifesting this plan vision They can't finish, I'm dynamic As time passes, I fly past it Every day's the climax of my passageway To the highest frequency I animate Can't fathom where I'm headed, man, I can't wait Done a few things that I can't erase Lost a few things that I can't replace Fuck it though, now I have a more expensive taste My attention and my quality, they resonate so every day I gotta dedicate, take risks, never hesitate, make shit generate. Hey, hope I answer some questions. Welcome to your divine intervention. Yeah.